Welcome back to Yoda King channel. On today's video, I'm going to be installing a high clearance rear tube bumper by Outgear Solutions. Bumper will have a two inch hitch receiver, slotted tabs for light pods, bed reinforcement tabs, and all the associated hardware. Also included are two body filler panels that goes underneath the tail light. Now you can get this powder coated. I chose not to because I wanted to see how it would come out with the spray can style of powder coating. So without further ado, let's get to it. So this bumper comes with these reinforcement brackets, some edge trim, these washers that are for the bolts that are gonna tie in your bumper to your chassis. It's a few of them. Also some hardware for your bolt lights for your license plate that Outgear Solution provides and stickers to rep this small company. First thing you should do when you receive this is wash it with soap and water to remove all the residue that it comes with. Then soak this with some acetone to remove all other impurities, making sure you have the right PPE. Next, you wanna sand it with a minimum of 60 grit paper or with whatever tool that would work for you. I was trying to get into all the nook and crannies. This bumper does have a lot of slots, so I made sure I didn't miss a spot. I'm lazy. I like to do it right the first time. Here I'm prying this can in order to use the instant aerosol trigger handle. For some odd reason, these cans are the only ones I have issues with when using the trigger. These triggers work great, just use swift and short sweeping motions. For this project, I only use two cans getting up to four coats. Dry to touch in two hours and should be recoated within 24 hours. The system will continue to cure to a maximum hardness and protection for five to 10 days. And a tip for any spray can if you don't want a splatter when you go for more coats is before putting the can down, hold it upside down and spray for two seconds and that will clear the nozzle for another use. There is no way anyone can tell if this was professionally done at a powder coating shop or by a weekend warrior. This stuff works really good. Now the bumper main plates are 375 thousandths of an inch thick where it mounts and then becomes 750 thousandths inch thick to the outside of the round tubes to mount recovery or like d-rings the round tubes are all one and a 75 hundredths inch thick dome and then 120 thousandth inch thick dome dom stands for drawn over mandrel and it's a welding method used to create high quality steel tubes through electrical resistance this bumper is tough so now it's time to disconnect all your electrical wiring. Go ahead and disconnect the wiring for the license plate lights as well as the hitch plug. Um, also, if you have parking sensors on your bumper, then you will have some additional wiring to disconnect for each sensor. My year and model did come with all these, unfortunately. Some of these are hard to get to. You're gonna need a sharp tool. Here I'm using a knife. Probably not the best tool, but hey, whatever works, right? This uh, one here, your parking sensors, is kind of tough to get to. You have to get it on the back side. There's like a triangular type of tab. You just got to hit it at the right place and it should come right off. It is a pain in the rear to get to these. Now listen, I'm going to keep it 100. I don't know where all these sensors tie to. I just knew if I went ahead and dropped this bumper, they were gonna be ripped apart. Just use your best judgment, use common sense, trace out all these wires. You're gonna see, when you take a good look at it, if you drop that bumper, they're gonna come apart. So just keep in mind, you're never gonna use these sensors as long as you have this uh, bumper by Outgear Solutions. You will use your tow plug, that's it. Now for your license plates lights right here, I found it easier just to kind of bend this plastic just a little bit and get it with a sharp knife. And you just need to lift that little tab for that plug and it comes right off. This is the worst one.
Now it's time to remove all the bolts securing the OEM bumper to the frame. What I did here was loosen all five bolts, but only remove four, leaving the one to the far back on, just to give me a sense of security so that bumper doesn't fall, even though they say that this bumper should be extremely snug so it just won't drop to the ground. But I went ahead and just left that out just a little bit right here, just about maybe about half an inch. And it's gonna be the same process on the other side. The driver and the passenger side are identical. So just repeat this process for both sides and set all these bolts aside because you're gonna be reusing them to secure the Outgear Solution bumper to the frame in the same spot. Now, making sure you use a jack unless you have help, place it under the hitch, get a firm grip on it and yank it off. It's extremely snug, so it may take a couple yanks. Now let's remove the hitch plug by releasing the two metal brackets on both sides. Now it's time to remove the OEM plastic bed caps that are secured by three clips. You can just break them off. You're not gonna reuse these again. And just repeat the process for the other side. Now, follow that line right here, put that bed cap right onto that light. And with a Sharpie, I made a line right under that bed cap just to make sure if I need to go back and measure again, I don't lose my position. And then go ahead and mark the holes as best as you can. It's kind of tight and cumbersome to get in there, but you'll find a way to do it. And just make sure you measured correct because you're only gonna drill once. Now, once you're ready, Go ahead with a quarter inch bit, punch your two holes, and repeat the process for the other side. Now go ahead and slide the longer provided bolts through the bed. I found it to be a lot easier to go from the inside out to tighten them. And just go ahead and slide your cap in there and make sure when you bolt those down, you use your washers that are provided. Now is time for prepping to cut the bedside and the fender flare. Place your tape along the fender and under your bed cap. I found it easy to put something flat on top of the bed of the truck and take measurements. The ground can be uneven and you will get a false measurement and ruin your whole mod. Please don't do this. For your bed cap, just trace the line following the bottom of the bed. Now I'm simply just gonna try to trace out everything I've measured from one end to the other. 21 inch and three quarters is the ballpark from the top of your bed to the fender, but, but gauge where the bottom of your bed cap is once it's installed and go straight across and you'll be fine. During this process, I was playing it safe and went just a little below the bed cap. And when I went to put on my bumper, it would not budge. So unfortunately I had to retrim everything. So please take this advice. Now, for this project, I got these three handy tools. One, the electric jigsaw with thin metal blade. I'm going to use this for the fender and an angle grinder with the four inch cutoff wheel and the one and only Sawzall. Man, this thing is handy. I'm going to use this to cut the metal at the bottom of the bed because this has different thickness of metal and this is going to cut through this like hot knife through butter. Now you don't really need all these three tools. It does make it a lot simpler and easier, but you can just get away with all this work using the angle grinder. For those who've never used a jigsaw, those blades tend to jump off the wheel if you're not careful. There's an old saying in my line of work, 
slow and easy wins the race. Just take your time, follow that line. And if you get off course, hopefully you didn't go too fast where you can't correct it. Remember, it's not how bad you screwed up, it's how good you recover. Now mine here is as crooked as a dog's back leg, but I'm gonna fix that with a little bit of metal grinding and a little bit of edge trim. So don't sweat it. If it doesn't come out too straight, you could always correct it. Now, as you can see here, I left the factory bed support brackets in place, and this would help you by keeping the best sides more stable as you do your cutting. Now, this is where the angle grinder comes in handy. I'm gonna remove my cutoff wheel and install a Steel Demon Diablo metal grinder and go ahead and shave some of this off and just correct that line, no biggie. Now I'm gonna go ahead and replace my OEM bed support brackets with the Outgear Solutions. Just go ahead and install your bolts. Get it in position because you're gonna measure and start drilling a hole. Now here, save yourself some frustration and curse words. Um, just put a board in between the fender and the fender flare or you're gonna have this as a reminder. Um, yeah, I was a little irate with myself. Shit it ain't son of a bitch! Bastard! Douchebag! But hey, I'm human, born to make mistakes. No ho, not this time, Satan. Okay, so you made it here so far. You're doing a good job. Maybe an amazing job, maybe better than me. So, but maybe you nicked a few spots and whatever you cut is gonna tend to rust because this is pretty much metal this is not plastic or fiberglass so you want to get yourself some touch-up paint now i got this from toyota if you want to know the color of your rig you got to open up your driver's side door let me show you there's a tag on your driver's side and after the ctr it's going to be this first digits here one h5 and you present that to your dealer or you can just give them your VIN number, which is mine is this one here, 3TM CZ. And of course, before installing your edge trim, make sure you paint all that at the bottom and give it some time to dry and you should be okay. All Gear Solution does provide enough edge trim for both ends. You can wait till you mount your bumper before you put your hitch plug. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on right now. Just be careful not to break it. Now, if you're like me and you hate asking for help or help doesn't come at an agreeable time, get yourself an electric hoist. These things come in handy. I'll leave a link in the description below for this stuff. It is the cat's meow. Now, remember those back end bolts on both ends I told you to leave in place, just loose. You can align this bumper with that bolt and it's gonna hook it and you're gonna just slide it in and you should go in snugly. Now, before you put these bolts on, make sure that you install those washers that Outgear Solution has provided and go ahead and stick some Loctite on this. It doesn't hurt to be extra safe. You're gonna be hitting trails and stuff could be flying off. You just never know. Now, according to Toyota spec, they want you to do 67 pounds. I'm gonna torque these at 70. This bumper changes the complete look of the back of one's truck. I get tons of people stopping me at the parking lot or random people just taking pictures since the install. I dig the sleek look, the strength and functionality. From the cleverness of offsetting the license plate to the placement of the pod brackets was well thought of. This bumper is ready to go off road and take some hits. From rock crawling to overlanding, this mod comes with plenty of benefits. Unfortunately, this make and model does not come with a tire swing out, but I'm sure I will find one soon. Bare metal comes in at $985 or 1,124 if you want that powder coated. Without shipping and tax, of course. The install will be a little bit lengthy if you decide to powder coat it yourself. 
Okay, so the last and final thing that we have to do is to be street legal with our bumper, our license plate need lights. Remember, you took the old one off from the OEM bumper. So we are gonna install these bolt lights that came with our bumper kit. This come with Outgear Solutions. And we're gonna tap into the positive, constant positive wire. Remember that, you can't hook it up to your reverse lights because then they'll only come on when you reverse. We want a constant power. We're gonna find that and I'm gonna show you how you do it very easy. With this, I got on Amazon this circuit tester. Very cheap, three bucks. We're gonna find that piece of wire lingering in there. We're gonna tap right into it, very easy. You ain't gotta strip anything. It's gonna tap into it with some quick splice and then we electrical tape it, done. And we're done with this project. Can't wait. So what you want to do here is get yourself scrap wire, 14 to 18 gauge, and splice the wires coming from the bolt lights, the black with black, red with red, together with some quick splice snap wire connectors. The bolt lights cables are very thin, they're a 26 gauge, but I made these work. Our Gear Solutions does not provide you with any of this, so I'll leave a link in the description below. you have an absolutely breathtaking hiney. I mean, that thing is good. So now what you wanna do here is remove the cover, the plastic, and spread that wire. Now, look at the plug and look at your hitch plug and try to find where it says running lights. More or less, you're gonna figure this out using your tester. But I want to make this as easy as possible for me. So I don't want to keep going back and forth looking for this source. Now with your truck on, engine off. Turn on your lights, put your turn signal on, go ahead and connect your tester to a ground, and now we're gonna start looking for the lights. Remember, you're gonna have three lights on according to your diagram. One is gonna be blinking, which is your turn signal, and two are gonna be constant. You wanna find that plug that is constant when it's running lights only, and you're gonna find that on your diagram if you do it the way I told you. Now, I found that the running lamp is gonna be a cable that's green. The green is gonna be the source for me to connect my red cables to. And there's two whites, one is neutral, one is part of another circuit. The big white thick cable, the biggest one out of all, is gonna be where I connect my black cables to. That's gonna be my neutral. Now the green is gonna be my running lamp, that's my source. You're gonna to wanna to connect your reds to that. But hey, just don't take my word for it. Go ahead and verify. Still trust, but verify.
All right, drum roll. Well, this is by far one of my favorite mods because you go from a body specialist to a powder coating pew and then a wireman. <laughs> so you just become the epitome of the jack of all trades and the master of none. Well, maybe you're picking up what I'm putting down. I don't know. But I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, please comment, like, and subscribe.